Let me, yeah, good. Yeah, so uh, through the years, uh, we have observed a lot of deep networks that are developed to address uh, really outstanding tasks in computer vision, uh, from classic uh, to 3D network, uh, TSN to recent slow path and uh, X3D models. We have obtained impressive acuity recognition results on widely used UCF11 uh, kinetics uh, datasets. But most of them are working on designing uh, efficient and effective modules and frameworks to model special temporal information videos. Um, despite the effectiveness in temporal dynamic modeling, they learn from a silent world. Another important modality, audio, synchronized with visual information is commonly ignored. In fact, videos are essential multimodal data with synchronized audio tracks. And the numerous studies have shown that combining deep and sensory data is crucial for human perception. But why joint audio visual perception is helpful and why hearing matters? Uh, let's first virtual video. There's no sound right now for this video. Oh, we can learn that today is the birthday of the baby. There's the cat and his mom is with him. But he suddenly cried. Then the question comes, why is the baby crying on his birthday? <laughs> we probably can do a lot of guesses from the video content uh, integrating uh, with our common sense. We might give some pot sponsors. First, um, he does not like the cat. Then uh, he might wait too long time for the cat. <laughs> but what is the real reason? Let's watch the whole video again. Happy birthday, yay! But if you sing it like this, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's what happened. <laughs> the unhappy birthday. Happy birthday. Now we stop the case. The baby cried because he cannot stand the sound of the happy birthday song seen in a normal way. So both audio and the visual modalities are important and only when we combine them, we can completely understand the same thing we do. A good news is that we do have a lot of multi-model audiovisual data such as in YouTube. So why not we begin to study audiovisual video sound standing? The goal of audiovisual sound standing it should learn to understand the scene from some and side. To explore this direction, some questions we need to think about. First, what things we can learn from side and sound? In the video, we have audio and visual content. What kind of things inside the videos we should care about? Whether joint audio visual modeling is better, then how to effectively integrate the two different modalities? and how to integrate the perceived thing from multi-sensory input. So when we get a decision, we have the model. Uh, why our model gets this uh, decision uh, from the input? And how to make our multi-sensory models robust? Basically, my research had focused on asking and solving these problems and uh, devoting to developing unified, expandable, and robust multi-sensory perception machines toward human-level perception intelligence. For well, unified um, perception, we hope to perceive things by unifying multi sensory. For the expandable perception, we want to enforce multi model interpretability into systems. For the robust perception, we want to strengthen robustness and defend against the attacks. The three thrusts uh, are distinct yet interconnected, and all of them are essential for designing powerful and trustworthy audiovisual sound standing systems. Here's the outline for the rest of the talk. First, I will uh, talk about learning to understand things from sound and sight by unifying different senses. And then 
I will talk about the multi-sensory interpretability and robustness. Finally, I will conclude the talk by some future research directions. In our early work, we take both all the animation modalities into consideration and explore all the visual events in videos. What is that all the visual events? All the visual events are synchronized reading segments in which the sound sources are readable and their sounds are audible. Let's check some examples. We can see that this video example is actually from a quite open domain rather than uh, constrained speech, music, uh, content. So we use the audiovisual events, we pause and seek to answer several questions. The first the basic question is that inference jointly outperform inference independently. Intuitively, some should be uh, useful at the human perception. It's not that clear in machine perception, especially for unconstrained videos. To answer this question, we introduce an audiovisual event localization task. The goal of the task is to predict event category for each audiovisual segment pair. Each segment pair contains synchronized one second long audio and visual content. The problem is challenging because we not only need to find whether an audiovisual segment pair is matched or not, and also predict a semantic label in the match semantic pair. To address the task, we use a simple CNR model. For example, even when audio segment and visual segment at time step P, we check the audio feature and visual feature. Then we do temporal modeling by LSTM and we fuse the audio visual feature to make prediction. Um, here are our results. We can see that combining audio and visual information can get better understanding for the audiovisual events. So join the audiovisual modeling is quite helpful here. Since we have two different modalities, one important question is how to integrate them. We explore three different theorem strategies. Early theorem, field of theorem before individual temporal modeling. For example, we obtain feature and fuse them and use one single temporal model to obtain the temporal um, aggregated feature like prediction. That theorem as shown here, theorem after individual temporal modeling. So first uh, do uh, temporal modeling with LSTM here and then fuse the feature. And the decision theorem, theorem uh, before the final prediction layer. So uh, just the fuse them at where uh, at end time and uh, obtain uh, the fuse the feature uh, and the, to make the final prediction. So we can find that the latter theorem is always better than early theorem and the deceiver. So latter theorem with individual temporal modeling is a better theorem strategy. Why? The reason is that all the other ratio are two different time series. They have their individual unimodal temporal pattern. If you feel them uh, very early, that means that when you do temporal modeling next, it will already lose certain temporal information, your individual unimodal temporal information. So that's the main reason. For the decision, it's very clear. So uh, if, if you use them at the very end, so already uh, lose a lot of uh, unique characteristics about the individual modality. So it gets slightly worse performance. So that theorem with individual temporal modeling is very important for all the visual modeling. We have observed that all the visual integration can help all the visual event understanding. But how does knowing one modality help model the other modality? To explore the audio-visual association, we introduce the audio-guided visual attention mechanism to adaptively find where sound sources are looking for in visual frames. Basically, we check the 2D visual feature map and then use the audio feature at the quarry, attend over the 2D feature maps to find where are audio regions in the visual frames. We visualize the attention hidden maps and find that all the guided visual attention can capture semantic regions of sound sources. And it's not just capturing silence or motions. For this example, when the mouse does not make any sound, even it appears here, it just generates like random uh, regions 
the model, the attention model will randomly select a certain region since there's no really attention. When it begins to max sounds, the model will only focus on mouth. So the attention can distinguish the audiovisual on relative video and only capture sounding objects. Here are more video results. And put more bedding in. that even it's not super uh, correct, but at least the model really tend to capture this kind of sounding regions in the, uh, in the videos. Um, after our initial exploration in this work, audiovisual event localization becomes a popular task, and there are a lot of follow-up works, and the used AV dataset has become a commonly used benchmark data for evaluating audiovisual tasks, such as audiovisual event localization, sound source localization, and the sound source uh, separation. In audiovisual event validation, we focus on video segments containing synchronized audiovisual content. Moving forward, there are actually various and diverse temporal video events, which are either audible, readable, or both. They can be mixed together in videos. Here are some examples. We have to do it when she has a frisbee or... Uh, we have the on-screen speed. Uh, we have the dog showing the video. The long moral uh, does not make a sound right now. We have the bus go, and we can hear the sound and uh, find it visually. This audio visually examples are ubiquitous, which leads us to some basic questions. What video events are audible, readable, and audio readable? Where and when are these events inside the video? How can we effectively detect them? To answer the bold questions and toward more unified multi-sensory perception, we pose and try to tackle a fundamental problem, audiovisual with the person, which aims to recognize event categories, find to sensory modalities, and meanwhile, find the temporal boundaries of when such an event starts at end. The audiovisual with the person will provide us a unified modality of real understanding over temporal audio and visual data. For this example, we not only need to know that there are three different events, basketball, speech, and stop, but also we need to detect the corresponding event boundaries for different event uh, modality types. However, learning such a full, fully supervised audiovisual with a person model requires densely annotated event modality and category labels with corresponding event onsets and offsets, which will make the labeling process extremely expensive and time consuming. If you can imagine that doing a video when you do the annotation, in the to reverse the video, hear the sound, they re recognize the difference from the different senses, and the uh, annotate the uh, precise temporal boundary. It's super challenging. To avoid tedious labeling, we explore weekly surprise learning for the task, which only requires sparse labeling on the presence or abs and absence of video events. The weak labels are easier to annotate and can be gathered in large scale from web video. For this example, we only need to end, uh, enter that, oh, there's the basketball, speech and dog. That's it. Their weak labels are super easy to obtain uh, from, uh, from our annotators. We collect uh, local and purse data containing more than 10,000 videos for 25 event categories with video level labels for training and the second level temporal boundaries associated with the modality bias and uh, event categories of validation and testing. So basically during training, we only need the video level weak labels. And during validation and testing, we do need the dense labels uh, for evaluating different models. We only have video level labels for training, but we'll predict precise event label offsets for all video segments during testing, which makes the weekly supported audio visual with the person here 
multi-model, multi-instance learning problem. That's a video sequence with three audio visual uh, segments appear still back. Each audio segment and the corresponding visual segment occurred at the same time denote two individual instances in our problem. So a party bag containing an event will have at least one party video segment, meanwhile, at least one modality has the event. For example, we have the speech. So at least in visual or audio, at least in one of the time step should contain the speech if the label uh, has the speech. During training, we can only assess the bag lab uh, labels. During inference, we need to know not only which segments have video events, but also which sensory modality per perceive the events. The temporal and uh, multimodal uncertainty makes the problem very challenging. Here's our framework. Given the audio and the uh, visual segments, and we use the uh, uh, visual uh, feature detector upon the width feature, and we use the audio feature detector upon the audio feature. And after that, we make individual predictions to obtain the audio event prediction and the visual event prediction from each instance feature. And since we only have the video level label, we don't have the corresponding ground truth label for our training uh, with the visual event or audio event. So we use a polling, a polling model to aggregate the predictions from audio and the visual, obtain the video level prediction. After that, we have the weekly supervised loss uh, using the video level label as a supervision to train, train, train. Actually, it's a classification problem and uh, use cross entropy to, to finish the optimization. The segments in videos from different time steps and different modality may have different video events. To tackle the temporal and the modality uncertainty in the problem, we propose an attentive MM uh, polling um, method to adaptively select the most informative uh, modality and the most informative temporal segments for prediction. Combining temporal attention and the audio visual, audio, uh, visual attention with the audio visual predictions, we can obtain the video level predictions. Basically, the attention model will adapt you to find the, the most informative uh, time steps and the most informative uh, audio visual modality. And combining with the prediction, we are obtain the aggregate of uh, the uh, prediction and the optimized with the weak labels. We compare it with three, uh, two different baselines. One is the max polling, one is the mean polling. Actually, for the max polling, uh, it's just the uh, complete the max value and, uh, uh, and from the predictions and uh, use the weak labels to do the training. And mean polling method, uh, uh, you got them equally and aggregate them and uh, then optimize the weak, with the weak labels. And compare with the max and the mean polling, our method gets much better results. The reason is that for the max polling, it only uses the most discriminative information. So we need to so we need to understand that the goal is not to want to just predict the weak label. We want to do audio visual with the person. We need to predict individual audio event and visual event and audio visual event for each individual time step. If you use the max polling, it only selects the most informative segment and the most informative modality. It will not use other information. So it is it does not use other information, it does not make sense that the model can learn, uh, make, uh, learn to predict the correct labels from the other content. So for the main polling, it uh, just uh, regards the two different data equally, uh, regards the uh, different time step equally, and the uh, algorithm to make a prediction. It can get overall bad audio visual predictions since it aggregates all the content, but it probably will make certain wrong audio event prediction, uh, visual, uh, visual event prediction since it leverage the undivided information to make the corresponding prediction. So we will introduce this noise. But uh, our attempt to polling method will adaptively find the most informative modality and the time step to make the correct prediction. The weak super learning um, only use less detailed annotations without requiring expensive densely label audio visual events for all segments. This advantage makes the weekly super learning framework appealing. However, it usually enforces models to only identify discriminative patterns in the training data, which are with abroad, observed in a lot of previous pretty surprised MIO uh, problems. In our problem, the issue becomes even more complicated since 
there are multiple modalities, only modality and which modality. And the, the two different modalities might not contain equally discriminative information. With the weekly super learning, the model tends to only use information from the most discriminative modality, but ignore another modality, which can probably check good video classification results, but probably terrible video person performance on the events from the ignored modality and all the visual events. Since a video level label containing all event category from audio and visual content within the video to mitigate the potential modality bias issue in the problem, we propose to use explicit supervision to both modality with the guided individual guided law. So basically, we will add the video, using the video level label to guide the visual, uh, visual prediction and the audio prediction. For example, we have the video level label speech and barking here. We will use it as a label for the visual prediction and audio prediction. But we need to understand that there are noise labels for the two different branches properly. For example, the speech is off screen. Uh, we still use the video level label to guide the learning. Um, the barking is correct. There is this and stop, but which will be a um, noise label. And uh, for the audio part, yeah, so the video level label uh, is correct, uh, ground truth uh, annotation for it. Uh, we need to understand that the modality bias problem is more crucial. So we can see that if we only use the weekly super learning loss, we obtain pretty good audio person result, uh, terrible visual, uh, visual person result, and audio visual even a uh, person result. So the reason is that the model tends to take information from most of the discriminative audio uh, modality and ignore the important information from the visual part. And with the guided loss, we can uh, reduce the problem. But we, as just as said, individual guided loss containing noise label. So you will not uh, ever change, uh, obtain the perfect result. With combining the weekly super learning loss, and the guided loss, we can obtain the overall much better result. But we need to understand that there's the essential limitation in the model we need to solve. So this method just propose, just uh, try to uh, discover the problem and uh, give a potential solution. In the future, we definitely can explore this direction to find the optimal way to solve the issue. Natural videos tend to contain continuous and repetitive rather than isolated audio and visual content. In particular, audio or visual events in a video usually redundantly recur multiple times inside the video, also within the same modality as well across different modalities. Uh, for example, given the video visual content in the red, red box, we have the, uh, we have the uh, redundant visual content in the uh, visual modality, and we have the temporal synchronized audio content and the temporal asynchronized uh, audio content. The mod to model the multimodal temporal context, we propose a hybrid attention network. Basically, it will use self attention to aggregate relevant features from the uh, within the same modality and try to aggregate uh, useful and relevant cross model information from the other modality and combine them together and update the features to make the future uh, prediction. Here are our results. We compare our model. We store baseline. First, the noun means that there's no any temporal modeling. GRU is a commonly used RNA architecture, and the transformer is a self attention based model. Our model leverages both uni model and the cross model content and achieves the overall better uh, results. We can see that GRU and the transformer can improve the person performance, which demonstrates that the temporal modeling is important. And uh, our hybrid attention uh, model achieves the overall best performance, it shows that. Leveraging cross model or uh, temporal context can further both the audio visual or the person result. Since there's no previous master, this is uh, uh, first, uh, this is the first time we introduced the task. But for benchmark, uh, the results we design baseline based on press between supervised uh, temporal action localization, sound event detection, and audio visual event localization method. Uh, all the methods cannot directly solve the problem, so we uh, like uh, revise their method uh, according, uh, let them can make two different predictions and uh, predict audio event, visual event, audio visual event. 
uh, definitely are better to the best result compared to the other baseline models. And uh, here's the video demo. Until the job was done, we salute you. So we can see that the problem is super challenging. We not only need to predict the correct semantic labels, but also we need to predict the corresponding correct event boundary and the modality types. So, okay. So although the audiovisual models have achieved the promising and outstanding performance by multi-sensory integration, a basic question, how the different modalities cooperate together, perceive things from sound and sight remains unexplored since we are generally using black box uh, deep models. To answer the question, we explore multi-sensory interpretability with audiovisual video captioning as a proxy and hope to discover audiovisual interactions mechanism during multi-sensory integration. We did captioning and to generate a natural language sentence to describe content in a given video. It's an essential audiovisual task for this example we first, without audio, we are playing a group of young girls dance here. With adding audio, the model generates the same word. To quantify the audiovisual integration in video captioning, we explore associations between semantic words and audiovisual modalities, and we then manipulate audio and visual relative importance to generate diverse sentences for a single video. The goal of this exploration is one to use the predicted words and sentences as an indicator to help us to explain what's happening, how the two different modalities cover together to make these predictions. Chris Master usually use an RM based encoder decoder sequence to sequence model. When generating next words, the decoder will use visual information, audio information, first words, and RN hidden set. However, the hidden set contains memorized information from different modalities which makes the models impossible to disentangle the contributions from individual modality for predicting the world. To overcome the problem, we threw away the RN decoder and proposed a modality interpretable word generation structure. In our model, we will have two modality indicators, EV and EA. Basically, the EV and EA will indicate how many visual and audio information are selected during word generation, respectively. To further achieve the controllable effect, we introduced two parameters, alpha A and alpha V, to control the importance of audio visual modalities. During testing, we can set, we setting different control values. We can uh, explore different modality compositions using a single trend model. Here are our full model with a pre-trained series to expect features with LTM to do temper modeling, and then we use a multi-model series to extract high-level visual text and the audio text uh, uh, embedding. And then we use the modality aware aggregation with audio visual controller uh, to fill the audio visual information. And the sentence generator will produce words from aggregated audio visual features. With a visual um, text MMCN as an example, uh, with visual features and the word embedding at input, the MMCN will construct uh, a 3D visual text tensor, and we then feed the 3D tensor uh, into a 2D residual network. The MMCN is a language model, so we need to make it auto regressive. Therefore, we use a mask convolution kernels to build the MMCNS. For the right example here, we can see that when we predict the word is, the words after the main will never be used in the CNN model. The reason to do that is that during prediction we do word by word decoding, we can always use a, a leverage of the previous world predictions to make predictions during inference. We cannot use the future information when we predict a word. From audio visual, uh, audio text and the visual text joined embeddings, we use MLP to aggregate features and then use softmax to output a set of weights. The weights will indicate the importance 
for each feature. So for example, here we have the weight for the wind showing from a wind modality, we have the weight for the audio modality. Then we define the energy function with activation and with energy EV and audio activation energy uh, EA. When the generative bird is a non word, basically a semantic word, if EV is larger than EA, visual content is more important for generating the word. If the EV is smaller than EA, the word is more related to audit, uh, auditory modality. We introduced the controller alpha to generate the two parameters, alpha A and alpha V2, manipulate the audio and the visual V for audio visual controllable with the We You can see that multiply them to different sets. Setting a controller to different values during inference, it will assign different importance to both audio and visual modality. And then our model can generate the diverse descriptions. Here's the formula for the two parameters. When alpha is uh, equal to 0.5, Upper A and upper V uh, are equal to one. Basically, uh, we regard them equally and use them. When upper is smaller than 0.5, we can see that upper A is one, but upper A is in zero to one. So then the visual modality is penalized. Otherwise, audio modality is penalized. However, when we directly pack the trainer model with a fixed controller, it fails to generate a meaningful and log logical sentences for certain alpha values. The main reason is that the training and testing are inconsistent with different audio-visual combinations. During training, we use a fixed alpha, but during testing, we want to use a different alpha to do decoding. To overcome the issue, we propose a, a, to use a random control alpha to train the network for enforcing training and testing to be consistent. In this way, the network can randomly sample different alpha to penalize the network, and we can randomly sample different alphas, which makes the model be able to explore the different as associations between the words and the individual modality, and discover the corresponding events from audio and visual modality in an unsurprising way. Here are our results. First, they are interpretable results. Do the half court shot. Oh, you ain't getting it over me. No, you're. I'm giving it to you so you can take the half court shot. Oh, okay. Hand it to me. Kobe! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we could totally play dodgeball. Our model can find the man worth from the sound. Then the controllable result. So basically, we have a single tune model that sets different alpha values for the single model and the present different predictions. Nagisa ng bawang sa butter, binuhusa ng espesyal na soup stock, inilagay ang alimango. Ini-stir fry ang noodles. Pinakuluan hanggang nanuot ang sarsa na may sahog na mushroom, red pepper, coriander, o wansoy, at leeks. So it's very interesting. You can see that when we penalize a model uh, using more audio information, we know that there's a woman talking, but we don't know what she's talking about since it's not speech recognition. But when we add more visual information, we, we know that a man is talking about this, um, a, a woman is talking about this, and a woman is talking about the cooking. Uh, when I further penalize the model, you place all the information. We don't know that's the woman. Say um, a person is the cooking, and teaching someone is cooking. Know that we have no the corresponding audio uh, prediction annotations, visual prediction annotations. We only have certain uh, human distribution, probably combining the both audio uh, visual content to. Uh, describe the content. But with our model training, our model can unsurprisingly uh, discover the associations uh, between uh, the words, sentences, uh, 
and with the individual cloud modalities. So uh, just a more detailed result, we can say that a uh, single model uh, by setting uh, different uh, alpha values, uh, we can obtain the expected result. When alpha is smaller than 0.5, the model tends to produce more audio related sentences. Alpha is larger than 0.5, it tends to generate more uh, visually uh, relevant sentences. When alpha is equal to 0.5, it might be biased to one modality or make comprehensive uh, description. So um, we can find that a different video, but one observation is that we can find different videos may need to use different alpha for obtaining be the best results. So uh, values matter in the program. Know that what is the meaning of the alpha? The alpha uh, actually is uh, control uh, it's controlling the fusion of the audio visual information. So dynamic fusion is quite important, at least from this kind of results here. To further investigate the offer, we compare the results of a given offer on MSR VTT data we see the uh, we caption it data. With the results, we can find that combining um, information from both audio and visual modalities can show overall better results. And the visual information is more important compared to the audio information. Uh, it shows that there is a kind of uh, visual bias data actually. Slightly shrinking um, the importance, for example, use the 0.6 is slightly more audition information, um, we can actually get slightly better results. This is further evidence show that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the data uh, is biased to the vision model. We further compare our method with that our method. We can see that without, with and without the random controller, our two models show com uh, comparable performance when we use a fixed alpha. When we compare our method with others, it's not better than recent method, even without it, uh, human audio. So whether audio does not matter and it's not that important for a problem, know that for this research, we try to explore the uh, multi-sensory vulnerability. The goal is not for uh, competing with the staff method, but we need to understand the reason why we adding the additional method, even with given a uh, weak bad, uh, bad bones, why it cannot achieve impressive, like improve the results. So we need to try to understand the reason. So whether audio visual appearance or audio visual uh, integration in the program is important. Probably it's not important. What's the, what's the answer? The answer is no. So actually, I will show that we need to use the different offer for different videos for getting the best uh, uh, sentences. So we need dynamic offer during testing. To demonstrate it, we use the first three metrics to help us make selections from generating a sentence for each video. So basically, we train the single model. We set different alphas. We obtain multiple sentences. We use the individual three metrics to help us select the best alpha. So we say it's a kind of oracle result. It's all upper bound of our model. And we can see that compared to uh, the not our method, our model can show significant relative improvement. To demonstrate the improvements, we can compare a recent a uh, CVC GFN method with the dense VID caption method. You can see that the performance only slightly improved over three years. Uh, they are all of them up, uh, both of them are published in top conferences. But with, a, with the dynamic alpha we've shown here, we can achieve a significant improvement of all these methods um, uh, uh, in terms of all the different metrics. So dynamic audiovisual integration matters. And uh, our, all, our multi-sensory explainable approach can not only interpret our model, but also can pro provide us a promising direction to further improve our models. So we highlighted the importance of audio visual integration, but whether it's always helpful, before investigating the problem, let's compare human and the machine perception. For humans, we live in a multi-sensory world, we can hear, we can see, and we can even touch and smell. What we see can help us listen. What we hear can help us see. But there's some caveats. For example, the Magatti effect. Let me show, show you two examples. For the next, you will do a quiz to guess what the person is speaking in the two videos. 
I try to use the quiz to challenge your speech perception capability. So let's see the left hand side. Oh, I need to stop the timer. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. This one? Ba, 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 ba. To me, the first ba, first one is ba sound, and the second one is ba sound. But what if I tell you that the sound does not be changed in the two different videos? Parent with different visual inputs, the, our human speech perception will fail. So audio visual integration is harmful here. So for machines, as demonstrated, videos are much more than that. Audio visual fusion is, uh, is used every year. What if the information of a modality is alert or detected? Whether there's a Magaki effect for a machine, whether audio visual integration is still helpful under attack. To answer the question, we use audio visual event recognition as a proxy and we use multiple uh, model attack, adversarial attacks as a tool to study multisensory model robustness. The goal of multi-model attacks is to fool the target multi-model model by adding human susceptible observations into its input from multiple modalities. In our implementation, faster, faster gradient uh, thing, uh, sign method and its variants are used uh, as a attack method. So basically, given the X, uh, compute the sign of the gradient into plus the uh, the, the uh, along the gradient the directions, the best you will make wrong predictions. So that is controllable, uh, control, controllable noise, noise is here. It's, uh, uh, it's not a human uh, perceptible. So you cannot really find it, but the model will, uh, will make a wrong prediction. So our um, task will add observations into audio and visual, and we try to fool the model. Here are all the visual event recognition results on the different attacks and the perturbation. The X axis de uh, denotes the attack strength, and the Y axis refers to recognition accuracy. For the audio attack, the blue line means the unimodal V model, which only uses the clean visual information. The other three lines are all the visual models attacked by different uh, attack methods, FGSM, PDD, and MIM. We can see that with increasing of the audio attack strength, the unimodal V model actually can achieve much better performance than the audio visual models. Note that these four models all have the same clean visual information. Similar observation can be found in the visual and audio visual attack. For example, the unimodal A uh, and the attack the visual models, audio visual models, uh, under the visual attack. So all of the models have the same uh, clean audio information, but the audio visual model achieves worse performance, similarly in the audio visual attack. From the results, we can learn that an unreliable modality could weaken perform, uh, perception by the other modality in audio visual models. So now you may ask, when should we still perform audio visual integration? To answer the question, I generated a 3D plot here. There are two axes uh, refer to the probability of the audio and the visual modality under attacks. There are three models. Green one is audio visual model, and the yellow one is unimodal V model, and the blue one is unimodal A. Uh, basically, it's really hard to find it since it's a super weak model here. We were at here. If we only care, care about clean models without considering potential attacks, it's like the tip of the iceberg. But now I would like to say we should look at the whole plot to consider all the potential situations. Audio could receive attacks, visual could be attacked, and all both of the modality are not clean. If you now ask me a question, should we still perform audio visual integration? It depends. There are multiple factors, such as likelihood, strength of attacks, the death, and the other, uh, other factors. But 
the same conclusion we can draw is that we need to think about more robust perception models. The joint perception is not always better than individual uh, perceptions under a text. Okay, in the last part of the talk, I want to talk about the future direction I'm interested in. Until very recently, the creative multi sensory systems have focused on learning from short and undreamed uh, video clip capture in static environments and the lack of reading capacity as shown in the, uh, my first research. However, we humans learn through interacting with dynamic and open work involving multi sensory perception and reading. Next, I would like to develop multi model algorithms that are able to uh, learn from a long form and undreamed videos and employ temporal and multi sensory reading to understand the complex of same dynamics in changing environments to scale up multi sensory uh, understanding. In real world applications, it's critical to ensure that the deployed systems are behaving responsibly and are trustworthy. To this end, our development models should be not only accurate, but also expandable, fair, and robust. Unfortunately, multi model data, audiovisual data, are essentially imbalanced. In visual recognition, we can put the same number of images into different categories to ensure that it's balanced. However, Audiovisual content are not always relevant in real world videos. The misalignment makes it almost impossible to have equally amount of audiovisual data for different event categories. The modality imbalance issues make our models biased to the dominant modality, which brings fairness concerns during the model training. Moreover, the common audiovisual inconsistency as a, a real world attack along with the multimodal adversarial attacks are threatening the advantages of our models during testing. In the future, I would like to tackle the changes that use more trustworthy multi sensory learning models. We know that the performance of uh, multi sensory learning models are strictly bounded by limits of existing machine learning tools and the uh, availability of high quality and large scale multi sensory data. Sometimes the upper bounds are far away from our real requirements. Human computer interaction has formalized the process of observing how machines behave when deployed in real-world applications and proper uh, designing decisions to improve them. It provides us a formal way to interact with our imperfect multi-sensory models and improve them to enable real-world applications and break the learning limits. I believe that human AI collaboration with techniques in HDI will be especially critical, critical in the case. In the future, I'd like to develop multi sensory learning frameworks that can incorporate machine automation and human intelligence to Im improve learning infrastructure, promote accessibility, and strengthen machine capability. I have begun to explore this direction. For this uh, first project, we facilitated audio descriptions, um, uh, audio descriptions creation for visually impaired people with a human in the loop. In the second project, we employ human AI collaboration to speed up high quality audiovisual object annotation creation. All right, in the end, I'd like to conclude the talk with answering the asked questions. So first, what things do we learn from sight uh, sight and sound? The answer is multi-sensory things. We have audiovisual and audiovisual events. We can find them, discover them, especially and temporarily. Whether joint audiovisual modeling is better. So the final answer will be it depends on whether sensory inputs are reliable, how to effectively integrate them, temporal modeling by leveraging both unimodal and cross model context, and how to integrate the, the perceived things from the uh, sensory inputs. We need to, to, uh, to answer the question, we need to design interpretable audiovisual integration. How to make our sensory model robust? We should be aware of potential attacks and be careful of. Be care, careful for audiovisual integration. Besides audiovisual understanding, I have other work in audio modeling, uh, image video uh, restoration. Due to the time limit, I will not talk about them in details, but I'm happy to discuss them and take questions. Like, uh, thanks for listening.